Bibles this morning, turn to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. And while you're turning there, I want to bring a little attention to some other people. And you're saying, oh, we don't want to say something about me. I, I can say something good about every one of you in this place. And because you're all just amazing like that. But uh, my daughter, son-in-law, and their kids, which happen to be my grandkids, um, are here all the way from Colorado Springs. And uh, so we're glad Trisha and Jason and Isaac's here. The other ones went into the children's church as well. But thank you for being here. And uh, the reason why I mentioned that uh, y'all can stand up if you want to is because I know my daughter, and I think she was going crazy just sitting there. And uh, she wanted to stand up and worship the Lord. So I wanted her to make sure she felt she'd feel comfortable standing up. So we're glad you're here. Let's give them a big hand. In front of my daughter, my granddaughter Anna was in the trip right, and she was in one of those uh, pictures up there, and that was a lot of fun to, to watch that. And a little scary, also. Uh, what do I need? She sang the national anthem too. That's right. Now that was tricky because I asked my wife if she would be the one over the tryouts uh, for the national anthem, and then Anna wanted to try out. I'm like, well, this isn't going to end well. <laughs> I mean, we done got that one handled, you know. And, uh, and so we had to pick a team of unbiased judges. And um, so we picked a team of unbiased judges, and Anna still won. So praise the Lord for that. <laughs> That's good. So Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 22, I want to read down through 25. And with the 4th of July um, actually taking place tomorrow, how can we do that? Did you know for the 4th of July is tomorrow? Yeah, good. Well, if you didn't, then you learned right here it's still our Cowboy Church. And uh, so I'm going to read a passage of Scripture. We're going to talk a little bit about the 4th of July and then have a, a message at the end of that. But um, it says, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as it is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this time that we have here this morning. Lord God, just to share with each other, to share your word, Lord, to be encouraged, to be challenged, maybe convicted, drawn a little closer to you, Lord God, that's our desire. So, Father, we just submit to you, we submit to the preaching of the word, Lord God, and we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, uh, I got a uh, text this morning from a friend of mine. His name is Victor Sweet. And uh, Victor lives over in Oklahoma. And uh, he heads up a, uh, a cowboy church conference every year. I, I tried to go this last year. I just wasn't able to go. I'm hoping this next year I'll be able to go. And they hold it down in Houston, Texas at Randy Weaver's church. And uh, so he kind of heads that up. And, and so we text once in a while. And, and uh, it's been a while since I heard from him, but he texted me this morning and he said, he says, I'm just praying for you, praying for your church, but I'm praying for a great awakening in our country. A great awakening. And I thought, you know something, that's really exactly what we need. We need a great awakening. Matter of fact, I had somebody else tell me this week that, that uh, somebody had made a comment that they believe that, that there is going to be a great awakening in this country and it's going to come through the cowboy churches. Uh, Imagine that. I think, well, why not? And uh, I think that's a good place as any to, to wake up America. Wake up America to what is true and what is right and, and what is stable and what is important. And man, we have so much stuff going on in our world today and, and so many uh, politically correct things and, and so much turmoil and, and there's anger and there's hate going on. And, and uh, we have ISIS uh, committing all kinds of acts of terror all over the world and, and in our country. And, and sometimes I think, God, what is going on? Well, we know that we are in the last days. The Bible tells us.
tells us that, that this world really is going to come to an end someday. And the Bible foretells that. And uh, I know that we probably cannot say, God, I'm really praying that sometime in this whole world just turn around and everybody turn to Jesus. Well, someday that will happen, but it's not going to be without some real tragedy that takes place first. We know that. We know that there's going to be a lot of wars. There's going to be rumors of wars. There's going to be difficulties in our world that's going to happen. But one day, Jesus is going to come back, folks. He's going to come back. And I want to make sure that I'm on his team. Amen? I want to make sure that I'm a part exactly of what he's doing. Because I don't see uh, things getting a whole lot better, but I do see a whole lot more people coming to Jesus. And that's the key. We're going to talk just a little bit before we get into this passage of Scripture. I'm going to read you some portions of the Declaration of Independence. How many of you have ever read the Declaration of Independence? Look at that. See? I'm in the right place. That's, that's what a cowboy church is about. But I'm going to read to you just a little bit, so bear with me. Uh, this was uh, the group that was in Congress July 4, 1776. The unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America uh, colonies. And this is the beginning of the, there's a little paragraph before this, but this is the beginning of the Declaration of Independence. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator, with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. And to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that government's law established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object invinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies. And such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. You see, right here in the Declaration of Independence, it tells us that mankind has a tendency to just give in to suffering or give in to the status quo instead of being willing to, willing to step out and make a change. You know, it's like that sometimes even in our personal lives. Sometimes we say, well, you know, I don't want to accept Jesus and make all that change. You know, I'm just going to keep living my life the way it is. I'm comfortable with these things. I'm comfortable with the things in my life that, that maybe they're good, maybe they're bad, or well, but I'm comfortable with it. And we do the same thing with our government. We say, well, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. But there is. You can make a choice. You can make a choice to serve God, to live for God, to commit your life to Him, and to stand for what's right and what's true. You see, I said this a while back, that even though we hear all this gloom and doom and despair about what's going on in our country, and that's what the news reports most of the time, I want to tell you something, we still live in the greatest country on the face of the earth. Yeah. Absolutely. And I want you to know that there are so many amazing, wonderful people in this United States that you can't go anywhere without finding nice people. Amen? Yeah. And a whole bunch of them live right here in the Grand Valley. And so you can be encouraged. I told the students this week in one of our chapel services that they certainly have renewed my faith in the future. Because we have all these young people that are excited about doing things right and serving the Lord. Oh yeah, they were teenagers. They were kids, absolutely. And uh, it's different than, than me now. But it wasn't a whole lot different than me then when I was their age. So it was like, it was fine, it was good. But yet... Seeing the things that we were praying for. So when we had a testimony service, Wednesday evening, one after another, after another, after another, kept coming up and testifying to what God had 
done in their lives through the Rodeo Bible Camp. And then they would step away and head back, and their friends would get up and meet them in the aisle and give them a hug and encourage them. I'll tell you something, they have renewed my faith in the future. Amen? So you continue to encourage your kids. Let me read to you the last part of our Declaration of Independence. It says, We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assembled appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, due in the name and by authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Now this is a powerful document that was penned back in 1776. But there's some real key points in this document that stand out to me. And these are the references to God. References to Almighty God. As a matter of fact, this statement that says, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, let me tell you what divine providence is. Divine providence is God's intention in the world. As a matter of fact, divine providence is also used as a title for God. And so we see that the founders of our country wanted to include God, not a God, not whatever God you wanted, not some God that you make out of a tree or a shrine or, or, you, or you choose to believe in, but the God, the one true God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. This is the God that they were reaching out to and saying that everything is going to rely on His divine intervention. Now there's a couple, of, I'm not going to go into all but there's a, different, a couple of different types of providence. One is God's divine providence, you know, where nature and everything just kind of fits into order. And then there's a type of providence that goes into the other area of miracles and signs and wonders that, that happen in our lives as we go through life. It's the same God that put everything in place, that put everything in order. He's the one that, that created this earth. He's the one that created the world. He's the one that created everything in it. It wasn't a result of evolution. It wasn't a result of, of some kind of big bang thing that happened. And, just accidentally everything fell into place. Let me tell you something. Those theories are just theories and they cannot go back to any type of origin. Even if you wanted to say it was a big bang, well, what started that? How did that get created? You see, there has to be a creator, a creator God that is there. And so we read the Bible and we know that it is true. It is factual. The things that we are worshiping, God that we're, not the things, but the God that we are worshiping is the one true God, the only true God. And I want to encourage you to, to draw close to Him uh, and allow Him to be that which guides and directs your life. The purpose or goal of divine providence is to accomplish the will of God. And that's what our forefathers were saying, is that, that it is our desire for these United States to accomplish the will of God, to ensure that His purposes are fulfilled. To, to know that God governs the affairs of men and He works through the natural order of things and He works through miracles. Let me tell you something. That was the desire and the design of our forefathers. And, and I stand before you this morning and say it doesn't matter what you believe. What matters is the truth. And that's the truth. You see, people will try to, they try to talk you out of it and talk a big game and talk a big argument. But let me tell you something. God is still God. And he's not changing. Amen? It was so much fun to watch God's protective hand over our cowboys and cowgirls this last week. Oh, my goodness. There were several times that my, my heart jumped plumb up in my throat as I was standing up there watching these kids get on those bronx and get on those bulls and, and watching these things happen. I'll tell you what, it, 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 I can't imagine what the parents were going through. 
So I was going through it, but I also knew that God's hand of protection was upon them. I got to tell you, when I watched the wave, I was just standing there watching the wave when he came off his horse, and, and I saw him come under that horse, and I saw that horse kick him in the head. And I want to tell you something, the first thing that came to my mind was, oh, Jesus touched that boy. Because it's scary. Guess what happened? Jesus touched him and protected him. You see, I want God's divine providence. I want God's divine will to continue to flow. You see, we know that our country was founded on Christian good principles because our founders believed in the Almighty God. And I know, I've read the history books, I've read all that. Some say, well, there was a couple atheists in there too. Okay. They probably got saved before they died. I don't know. But the only way that this country is going to remain the way it is, the only way this country is going to remain a godly country, the only way this country is going to survive until Jesus comes is if the United States or the people of the United States will re remain devoted to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And just this week, folks, you know what? We are just a small part of something way bigger than us. Do you know there are believers all over this world? Do you know there are people sitting in churches all over this valley this morning worshiping Jesus, living their lives for Him, teaching their kids to live for Jesus, teaching their kids to, to serve Him and to grow up and be responsible adults. It's all over. We are not alone. Amen? And so I'm going to go to the Bible and look at just a, a few quick things. We have just a few minutes. A few quick things that this tells us in this passage of Scripture. Uh, chapter, I'm sorry, verse 22 of chapter 10 says, let us draw near to God with a true heart and full assurance of faith. You see, we must draw near. What does it mean to draw near to God? It means you put out an effort to get to know Him. You desire to know God and to know about Him. And I pray that God will give you a desire for His Word. I remember when I committed my life to the Lord as a young man and, and uh, was trying to get to know Him better and all I had was a King James Version Bible. Man, that would mess you up. <laughs> but I began to read it anyway. And uh, I didn't talk like that. But I figured, well, I guess God does. And so I started praying, Oh, Father, Thou lead, and all that stuff. And I think God was shaking his head. He said, Just talk to me. Like, you're not even getting it in the right place. And uh, but I began to read because I had a hunger to know God. And the more I read, the more things began to get revealed to me out of the Word. And I was pretty good understanding a lot of the stuff. Some of it got messed up because it didn't make sense. And I had to go back and learn some more. But I wanted to get to know God. It says that we need to draw close to Him with a true heart and pure motives. We need to turn away from evil and serve God with faith, trust, and expectation. I want to just keep encouraging him that as long as I'm your pastor, as long as I'm here, I'm going to keep encouraging you to get to know him better. Get to know what he's about. Come to him with a pure heart. Come to him with a repentant heart. Come to him with pure motives. Not, oh God, I'm going to come to you because I want to see what you can give me. I want to see what you can do for me. No, I just want to come to you because I love you. The second thing we see is in verse 23. It says, hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. And so the second thing is hold on to hope. Our hope is in Jesus and eternal life. You see, if you lose hope, you lose everything. So I was told that our car will start in the morning. And now that's the only hope you have. You may be disappointed. Matter of fact, one of our uh, team leaders called the day on Monday when we were registering. And he said, I have two vehicles. Neither one of them will start. <laughs> He didn't make it, by the way. He got. He said, everything's breaking down. The tractor's breaking down. The pickups are breaking. Everything's breaking down. I said, maybe you need to stay there and fix it. <laughs> That'd be good. But if that was our only hope, no wonder we'd, we'd be depressed. We'd be discouraged. If we only hoped in, maybe, I hope it'll rain someday. Well, it'll rain. I hope we get up. I hope we can go. I hope... I hope I can make this church. I hope, I hope my kids turn out okay. That's our only hope. But we may just be disappointed. But if we keep our eyes fixed on the goal, if we keep our eyes fixed on the Lord, no matter how difficult life 
becomes, I promise you, it will keep you going through any difficult circumstance, any trial, any, anything that you face. Because your hope is in the Lord. Your hope is beyond that circumstance. Your hope is beyond this life. Your hope is in eternal life. Your hope is in spending eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven. That's where our hope lies. And if you can stay a hold of that hope, you're going to get through anything. You're going to get past anything. I've seen these young people have renewed hope in life. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Mesa County is number one in the state of Colorado for teenage suicide. You know why? Because our young people are losing hope. Because the things they have hoped in, maybe a, a new boyfriend or girlfriend or a new car or whatever, didn't happen. And so they feel like their, their life isn't worth living anymore. That's why we need to teach them about Jesus and about eternity and help them to understand there is things way bigger than, and I know at the moment, uh, having a boyfriend or a girlfriend can be a pretty big deal. They really can. But let's help them to have hope in something bigger than that. And then thirdly, we need to consider one another. We see in verse 24. It says, let us consider one another in order to stir up. In the King James Version, I really like the verse there. It says, let us spur one another on to good works. <laughs> That's right. If you want to get that horse moving in the right direction, you stick to the spurs to it. And he starts acting up, you stick the spurs to it, you correct it, you get it going. And that's what the Bible is telling us to do, is we need to consider one another. We need to help each other succeed. We need to help each other stay focused. The Bible says we're to, to focus on love and, and good works. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I need people to spur me on a little bit. There are times when I get a little discouraged, or I get concerned about somebody, somebody straighten me out, refocus me, and say, what are you complaining and griping about? You're serving the Almighty God. Stick a little spur to them. Encourage them. That's what the Bible tells us to do. We need to consider one another. And then number four, I gotta hurry. We need to get together often. It says in verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of uh, of some, but exhorting one another as uh, so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day? That's talking about the, the end of days, the end of time. Folks, we need each other. We do. We need to encourage one another. And we say, well, you know, I just go out and uh, get on my horse and ride up in the mountains and that's all the encouragement I need. Sometimes it is. Other times, what happens is, is no matter where you go, there you are. Some of our biggest problem is ourselves. Yeah. And we need someone else. You know, sometimes it's, you know, I, I was been told since I was just a little bugger, you know, just you gotta pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You know what? I tried that one time. I grabbed a hold of my bootstraps and I told them I didn't come even a little bit off the ground. Because I can't lift myself up off the ground. But there are people around me that can lift me up. That can pull me up. That can encourage me. We need each other. Look for ways to encourage one another. Look for ways to lift one another up. If you see somebody that seems a little bit down, just go encourage them a little bit. You don't have to know all the details. You may not want to know all the details. You may not need to know all the details. So it's not about us finding out all the bad stuff. Just find a way to encourage them. The Bible says we need to get together more often. I think y'all have to have more barbecues and invite me over. <laughs> I think that'd be awesome. <laughs> but there's another way of doing that too. And that's coming to Cowboy Church. We're going to another church. Come together. It's a good way to, to see one another once a week and, and uh, say, hey, how you doing? We, we've seen people come to God's talking to somebody the other day and, and uh, they were fairly new to Cowboy Church today and they said, you know what? I came to Cowboy Church. I couldn't believe all the people I knew. I didn't know all those people went to Cowboy Church. Now, this person didn't say I didn't know all those people went to church. That could have been a different story. <laughs> But they said, I didn't know all those people went to Cowboy Church. These are my friends. And, and it was so neat to walk in and see all these people I knew. It was an encouragement to that person. So y'all are an encouragement to people that come in here when they see you. I know, I think it happened to Gary.
Gary Peach, and Gary's not here this morning, he'll be here tonight, but somebody told Gary he's grooming at the door when he was out of the cell barn, and somebody went up and said, I didn't know you went here. I didn't know you went to this cowboy church. And uh, so we had a little talk about that, and I told him he needs to be a little more open with his faith. <laughs> But it is good. It's good to come together, to encourage, to lift up, and to see what God has for each and every one of us. So, in conclusion, our country was founded on the opportunity to worship freedom and to be free from tyranny and an oppressive government. That's what our country was founded on. Folks, we can still worship God freely. You can walk down the road with your Bible if you want to. You can sit in a restaurant and pray. The other night, I took Danny Kimball, he's our, uh, our bareback instructor at uh, uh, Brody Bible Camp. And I took Danny to the uh, hotel, and uh, I guess that was Thursday evening. When we walked in to the hotel, there's this young lady there named Crystal. And Crystal was behind the desk, and we got to, I was telling her what we just been doing. I was getting checked in, paying for your room. And, and uh, she said, well, maybe you guys could pray for me. She said, maybe you could pray that I would, I would get my own place. And I'd be able to get my kids back. You know what we did? We took her hand across the counter. And we just began to pray. Right there in the hotel. <laughs> Two cowboys. And right here, behind the counter. You know how the door would make that little ding sound when people come in? That door would begin to ding. People began to come in. We didn't even look up. We just kept praying. Pretty soon, the lady standing behind us, she said, No, that's really me. That's really me that you guys did that. She said, I, was, I, I just joined with you in prayer. We didn't know who came in there. They didn't know, well, they probably came in your room. But I believe God's doing the work in Crystal's life. You see, we still live in that kind of country. Yes. Where we can do it. Nobody shot us. Nobody put us in jail. Nobody ran us off. But we may very well change the life. Thursday evening. That's comforting. And that's something. That's what it's about. So in order for all these things to work, we need to do four things. Draw near to God. Hold on to hope, consider one another, and get together often. Not only will these things save our soul, folks, they could very well save our country. Yes, and we have an opportunity through this little cowboy church to make a big impact all over this world. Let me tell you, more and more people are getting to know who you are. They're getting to, they're beginning to have expectations. What I mean by that is if somebody says they're part of Stillwater Cowboy Church, then they know that that person will pray for them. That person will encourage them. That person might invite them to a barbecue. <laughs> you never know. But they're seeing God do some amazing things. I believe we can do something about the statistics in this Grand Valley just through this little old Stillwater Cowboy Church. So continue to encourage people. Continue to draw near to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much, Lord, that you've given us this opportunity to be here together. Lord, on this day preceding the 4th of July, where we celebrate our freedom and independence from a tyrannical government. Lord God, I know our country is held. I know our leaders are held. But Father, I also know the only way that's going to happen is if your people will humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways. Then your word tells us that you will heal our land. Lord, we turn to you this morning. We thank you for what you've done to the world your Bible camp. We thank you for what you've done in individuals' lives. We thank you, Lord, that we have a hope that we can look forward to. 
Now, if their heads bowed and eyes closed, real quickly, if you're here this morning and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. Please just slip up a hand. I want to pray for you. The last couple of minutes, anyone at all. You've not accepted Jesus, and you say, I want to accept Jesus. I won't make you come up here. I'll just pray with you. Right where you're at. Anybody at all? Okay. Father, bless each and every one real good as we go throughout this week. I know there's many of us that are just tired, wore out, Lord, uh, emotionally, wore out physically, our brain are tired, Lord. But Father, help us to not be too tired to worship you and to live for you. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. Before you leave, get a hold of somebody. Sam will be praying for you this week. And then do it.